What's going on YouTube? Giasno right here. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Android on an older iPhone or iPod Touch. Now this procedure works only on the iPhone 4 or lower, all the way down to the first iPhone or on the iPod Touch first generation. So we're going to start, I'm going to use an iPod Touch first generation for this video in here and the files are available and can be downloaded from iDroid in here, which is created by Albi, this developer in here, and the website contains the iDroid, which is the Android for iPhone, and the open iBoot and of course the tools that are necessary. The only thing that is missing is the tutorial, which says work in progress, but I'm going to provide that. So all the files that you need to download are available in here. So I got mine for the uh, device that I'm going to use, and the first thing we're going to have to do is to install open iBoot tools in here which is this executable file we're going to use it and we're going to start with next agree and so on now this will install the uh, tools that we need and of course we're going to have to run some commands in order to install the driver press ok in here and we should be good to go press finish and now we're going to run Control r and this is a command we need hdwwiz so we press ok and it's going to show up this in here you press next you press search for all and of course we're going to do this, press next again and show all devices. Now you're going to press have disk, you're going to press browse and you're going to go in here to your C drive or whatever you have the uh, Windows partition, go to program files x86, open iBoot tools and Windows 7. This is the folder and select this ENF file in here. Press OK and you should have Apple mobile device open iBoot mode. We press next and there you go. It's going to ask you if you want to install it, I'm going to press install and it's going to be good to go. So there we go, the uh, device cannot start but the um, driver has been installed. Now we're going to have to open iTunes and restore the device because as I said I'm running an iPod Touch which is the first generation and it's supported but unfortunately the Red Snow version we're going to use to jailbreak the device which is a requirement doesn't support the latest version supported by this device which is I think 3.1.3 so we're going to have to go to 3.1.2 so I'm going to go ahead in here with continue and I'm going to press get started in here and restore iPod so what I have to do is to press shift and restore iPod if you're using the same device as mine and of course we're going to wait a couple seconds for it to pick up in here and select the 3.1.2 now I hope that the latest version of iTunes is able to handle this low version and this old device but anyways we're going to see in a couple seconds okay so as you can see the downgrade was successful it's running 3.1.2 now the problem is that if you're trying to do this project it doesn't matter what device you have the original files from the iDrive project support only up to iOS 4.1 so whatever device you have downgrade it all the way down to iOS 4.1 or even past that if it's necessary so in my case the first generation iPod touch doesn't support iOS 4.1 and of course I downgraded to iOS 3.1.2 so let's continue now with it connected we're going to open this version of Red Snow this is important you need Red Snow version 0.9.4 available in the description down below other versions or newer versions may fail so I'm going to go ahead and open it and we're going to have to feed it with the IPSW for this device. So we press browse here and we're going to select the IPSW that we just restored. It successfully identified the version. This doesn't work with iOS 3.1.3, only 3.1.2. So we're going to go ahead in here, it's going to patch everything that has to be patched and of course we're going to press install CDA in here and nothing else pressing here next and now we're going to have to put the device in DFU mode so in order to do that we're going to have to use a combination of buttons which is of course the power button and the home button if you don't know how to put your iPhone or iPod in DFU mode go ahead and google it it's pretty easy to do so and of course once you're in DFU mode it will start automatically the uh, chain process and it's going to upload stuff you're going to see a disk icon with a green arrow on your screen of the phone and it's going to do its thing you're going to have to let it do its thing and once it's complete you're going to get back to the phone and continue what we're doing we're pretty much jailbreaking yes this is how jailbreaking worked back in the days we're pretty much jailbreaking the device so that we're able to get Cydia and install the IO kit utilities from Cydia because we're going to need that later on including the AFC2 ads so we're going to be able to transfer files so I'm going to wait for it to be complete and be right back alright so it's done now you're going to have to wait for the phone to restart and of course you're going to go into Cydia 
wait for it a couple years to load because it's the old version of Cydia and install these two packages in here, IOKit Tools and AFC to add. Both of them are required in order to complete the installation of Android. Ooh, jump cut. So I realized that Cydia is massively broken at this point, so you will not be able to install those packages. So what we're going to do is to get iPhone Box. So we're going to go here to iPhoneBox.com and get the uh, iPhone Box version 3.0. So we should be able to browse the file system with that. So let's see. Now I'm going to go ahead in here and I should be able to see the device, which is this one here, file manager, and there we go. We're able to browse the file system of the phone. So in here, we're going to navigate to var and here we're going to have to create a few folders. The first folder we're going to create is iDroid. So we're going to go ahead in here, new folder, iDroid. And the next one we're going to create is called a uh, folder in here, SD card, so SD card. And of course, the uh, next one is called firmware. So firmware, like this. In the iDroid folder that we just created, we're going to have to unpack the uh, Android files. So we're going to go ahead in here on the iDroid unofficial, see downloads, and we're going to get the Android for our device. So as you can see, you have iPod Touch 1G. And in my case, this one is the latest version, the Pepper whatever. So I downloaded that already and I have it in here. You have to extract it and you have to copy everything in here down to that folder. So it's going to take a few seconds to do that. So I'm going to be right back once it's done. Okay, so now that the files are in here in place, we have to go back to the var into the firmware. So we're going to search for firmware in here and we're going to have to add the Wi-Fi drivers and the drivers for the screen, which are called Zapier. So we're going to navigate here on the iDroid, on unofficial Android. So we're going to get the Wi-Fi drivers. I already got them. So let me go ahead in here, Wi-Fi, and I'm going to put them in here. And now we need to get them for the screen. Normally you get them by using a command, but we cannot run the command since we cannot install the IOKit tools. But I found that XDA developers have a post on how to install Android on the device, which is of course a little bit outdated, but they do have the files, including the drivers for the screen in this folder in here. So you download that and you have to extract the uh, drivers yourself. So we're going to go ahead in here. These are the files you get from the XDA developers. Go into this folder, into the multi-touch. And for the first generation iPod touch, it's this one in here. And the first iPhone is these in here. So I'm going to get the Zapier one and that's it. With that being said, we can now close this in here and proceed to the step two. And now we have to put the phone in recovery mode or the iPod, of course. So you can do that manually by fiddling with the buttons or you can use Tenorshare's Rayboot, which is available in here at this address, Tenorshare Products Rayboot, which is free download for Windows and Mac. So we're going to open it and press in here, press yes, and we're going to press enter recovery once it detects my phone. So we just have to let it connect it detected the iPod Touch 1 and we press enter recovery mode. So the thing will restart right away and it should be in recovery mode now, which yes, it is. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and open the command prompt and we're going to install open iBoot. So to do that, we're going to have to navigate to this website in here, iDroid, and we're going to have to go back in here and scroll to the download open iBoot. See downloads and you're going to get the version for your device. In my case, it's the iPod Touch first generation. So I already have it in there. We're going to navigate here to this computer to C and program files and I'm going to search for open iBoot. So this one in here and I'm going to drag and drop the file that I have downloaded. So open iBoot. I'm going to get this one here. If it's not named open iBoot, make sure you rename it like that. Press continue. And what I'm going to do is to take the load i back in here and drop it in this. Make a space like that and then put the open iBoot file. I'm going to press enter. There we go. It should have uh, started. You're going to see some scrolling text on your device. Yeah, it seems to be working in my case and I should be able to see the console and so on. So now what I need to do is to pretty much load the uh, OIBC. So I'm going to get this one here, paste it and start it like this. All right, so you should see something like this. Once you see this, then you're pretty much good to go. Now we're going to write install in here. So install like that 
and it's going to install Open iBoot on our device, and then we're going to write reboot, and we should be good to go. We should have Android on our phone finally. Okay, so at this point, if you see something like this, which says done install, you should be able to go. So something that I forgot to mention is that when you open iBoot with the um, you know load iBack command. It's going to show up some menu with three items, a console, iOS and Android. You're going to navigate with the volume buttons or the power button to the console and press the home button in there. You're going to see some ASCII character saying open iBoot and then you're going to connect with OIBC in here. So now we're going to write reboot in here and we should be good to go. So that's it. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to connect the camera and show you live what is going on in here. Okay, so here's the device, it now has open iBoot and you can choose between iOS, console and Android. We're going to press the uh, power button to go to Android and now we're going to press this in here. So that is going to boot into the Android. We're going to see right in a second what's going on in here, but it's going to take a while. So yeah, it's an old version of Android. So yeah, don't take it for granted. It's going to take a few minutes to boot up properly. But after that, you're going to have a real Android on your phone. Okay, so at this point, the device is properly booting Android and it's going to take just a few minutes to you know, have the first start and then it's going to boot faster. And you have both iOS and Android. Of course, this is not for production. This is not for usage day by day. I'm not expecting you to use the very old Android version or the very old iPod Touch first generation. It's just, you know, an experience. You get to play with iOS and the device and you get to play with Android, which is quite nice in my opinion. So it's now booting. We're going to get back to it once it booted. All right, so as you can see, fully fledged Android on this device in here. We're going to open the menu. Let me go to what, to settings if I ever get to find that um, icon. So settings in here. And we're going to open it. Of course, it doesn't work very, very fast because this is a very, very old device. But you got the idea, it does the trick, it does have Android, and as you can see, you get the information about the kernel if you want to check that out to verify if it's genuine, but of course it works. But yeah, anyways, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated, I'm Gio Snow, peace out.